right? Well, thanks for the introduction and for the invitation and for the wonderful workshop. Uh, so this is joint work with Alexandro uh, Wanshak in Paris. Um, and we're finishing up a draft that should be on archive soon. Um, so my plan um, is going to be to tell you about three things and maybe one more. Uh, so the first one will be algebraic. So will be the algebra that's involved in neurosurgery. Um, and I'm going to pose a problem. Um, in the second part, I'm going to introduce some classical and some new tools from theory of operands and topology. Um, the third part, I'm going to sketch how to solve the problem. Um, this algebra problem using these topological tools. And then if there's time, I'm going to explain how these tools also give some nice uh, motivic uh, results, and in particular give a uh, um, very easy proof of the unique images. Shifted by homological degree one. 
um, and its square equals zero. <coughs> um, and then to get, it satisfies some additional relations with these guys. Um, so together these form an EV algebra. And there is a, an important fact that follows from the Deligne conjectures that in fact the BD algebra acts already on chains. All these identifications work on the chain level, and the BD algebra structure exists so sort of up to quasi isomorphism. There's a canonical BD algebra structure on the chain level. Um, so we've got this here. Um, but now, so, so we have this operator B, um, and so, so we, we know that we have some, some multiplication on um, symplectic cohomology, but what is this B operator? Well, you can think of symplectic cohomology as some, uh, it has some model as a loop space. Um, so on here we have a loop rotation operation. So we have an action of homology of S1, and again, it lifts to loop level, or to, to chain level. Um, and, and so the homology of S1 is the algebra K of B mod B squared equals zero. B is in the right degree, and this is precisely the BB operator. And now because X is compact, this, this identity says that, um, that there's some localization result that says that all loops that contribute here are trivial loops. So in particular, this action uh, is homotopy trivial. By homotopy trivial, I mean that there is some action of this algebra on chains, and this um, module over this algebra is equivalent to a trivial module with trivial action. It is quasi-isomorphic to the module of trivial action. So this is some algebraic structure called the homotopy trivialization. Um, and now there is this wonderful theorem due to Drummond Cole, that's one person, and Bruno Vallette, um, called, um, I'm just going to call it the S1 trivialization theorem. And I'm going to write it on, I guess I'll fit it on here. Um, Don't. <laughs> and uh, a little bit bigger. S1 um, and it's an identity between two different algebraic data. So you have on the one side BB algebras uh, plus uh, homotopy trivialization of the K of B action component. Um, and you take this up to um, quasi isomorphism of, of these structures. So you, you invert all maps that are homotopic, of, of these structures that are homotopic equivalences. Work in the DG world, and this is a category of algebras is equivalent to a category of something called supercommutative algebras. Again, up to quasi -symmetry. So, uh, why do we care about this? I just you know introduced this new term that I didn't talk about yet. Well, this turns out to be um, responsible for a, a very beautiful part of this picture, which is namely that um, I haven't talked about this guy, but because X is symplectic, its cohomology has a quantum product. Again, with these coefficients. Um, and this quantum product is actually. Um, it packages a bunch of different operations, but it packages so, somehow all the gromov witten operations in G is zero. Uh, <coughs> algebra in G is zero. And so this is precisely um, the same thing as the gromov witten kind of algebra structure in G is zero. So this exactly is responsible for um, the 
quantum product operations. And so if you look at it, it's a very beautiful picture that we get at the end of the day because here we have some purely categorical object. We have some, some category with a duality. And from it, we get some algebra structure. And then with this tiny amount of additional data, this realization of the circle action, we get this very geometric algebra structure here. So uh, the, the structure of the S1 generalization, does it, is it encoded in the Calabria structure itself? No. no. That's right. So it's, it's uh, additional data. And it's hard to find on the DSEC in general. Usually people use some kind of a GPC star action or some, some extraneous data. So, so that's right. That's a, that's a real extra part of it. But the DB algebra is? The DB algebra is automatic from the yeah, Calabria category. Mm -hmm. um, right. So, OK. So we, we have this wonderful result. And uh, now there's a natural question. Well, um, here the, the Gromov-Witten algebra structure, you, you can ask uh, what happens in the higher genus. Um, and so the question is, can we, can we put something on the left here? So can we put something on here and on here that's responsible for the higher genus curve counts, for the higher genus sort of Gromov-Witten algebra structure? So um, what do we put on the uh, left-hand side and also on the middle? What, this is actually kind of a strict algebra structure that, that I'm going to explain later. I mean, it's h tau of x, not of Realization is the exact same realization. It's independent of, of any. It's just algebra structure. Yeah. 
yeah, you, you don't even need the other shift. You just look at it's just a module program. Yes. Um, and so the, this answer, this sort of relates some structure appearing naturally here and some structure appearing naturally here. And uh, the question that, that is very deep and that I won't answer is how to relate this um, frame complex surface structure here with some categorical structure here on the Bukai category. So this is kind of uh, an open, deep question. Uh, what categorical structure on the Fukai category uh, gives this F FCS guy on, on in the middle? So this should again make sense even for open varieties. Something like this should exist, um, and I think that maybe BCOD theory, which I don't understand, gives a partial answer. Um, but this, this part I'm not going to address. So, so I'm just comparing the center and the right. There's one upper end that acts on the center. There's a trivialization. There's something on the right. We want to show that these things are the same. Um, so um, the idea is to use some topological formalism. Um, and so namely, I'm going to pass to section 2 which is operands and um, So, a reminder for people who haven't seen operands, briefly, uh, um, an operand is a structure, it's an algebraic structure uh, that encodes Algebra, generalized algebra operations. Um, so we're going to write that we, we have some, imagine that there are some collection of algebra operations with n inputs and an output, various multiplication operations, and relations between them. So, so let me just quickly give a definition. So um, an operand O is a tuple. The first part is a collection of spaces. This is a space of n to 1 operations. And every operation we're going to draw as some box with some number of inputs and one output. Um, and then we have some composition maps. So the idea is, so for example, this is mu in O3. There's three inputs. Uh, and we order the inputs, one, two, three. And now if you think of this as actually some operation, you have three elements of an algebra and you spit out one. Well, if you have some other, maybe a different three to one operation, um, then you can chain it. Um, you can chain it in, in, into here, into here, into here. And you get a new operation that now has one, two, three, four, five free inputs. Um, so, and again, these compositions are indexed by um, some um, label. So we have composition operations like this: O M cross O N to O N plus N minus one. Again, the, the minus one is because one of them inputs gets chained up. Uh, and then there's an additional um, sort of formal structure, which is that because the inputs are ordered, um, what we can do, we we'll take our favorite operation mu, and then we can compose it with some transposition, or with some permutation sigma. And then we get a new operation, which we call mu twisted by sigma. Um, and these are encoded by some SN action on O N on the inputs. And so these, these three data have to satisfy some relations. And um, what you get is an operand. So notice that here, usually when people talk about operands, there's an additional unit axiom. But here I'm not using it. Our operands will not be unital. They'll be homotopy unital, but this will be some technical ideas that we'll get into. So, not unit at all, but this is sort of a small modification. Um, 
And notice that you know, throughout I've been talking about spaces of operations, and I was kind of ambiguous as to what kind of spaces they, they are. And in fact, we can use vector spaces, or we can use topological spaces, um, or in fact, any symmetric monoidal category. And so from now on, um, I want to focus on topological operands. Uh, so first of all, they form a category. So what is a map from O to O prime? Well, it's just a map on every level um, of topological spaces that's compatible with all structures. Um, and then a map F, and F is called a quasi-equivalence uh, if um, each of I is a weak homotopy equivalence. Um, and for for you just for some technical reasons to simplify our life a little bit. Um, for most of the talk, I'm, I'm going to be weaken this condition of so a homotopy, a weak homotopy equivalence is, equi is the same thing as being a, uh, an equivalence on all homotopy groups. Um, and I'm going to base change to I'm going to Q complete. So that's essentially corresponds to being a homotopy equivalence um, on pi zero and um, on higher homology groups after you tensor with Q. So this is some technicality um, that you can safely um, and that at the end will turn out to not be important. So so but but the the gadget that we really want to get our hands on is, is these topological operands up to this relation of equivalence. We can say that two operands are the same if they are related by a chain of these quasi equivalences. Um, and so Given a topological opera, we can take its homology. This is going to be an opera in vector spaces, or we can take its chains, and that's going to be a DG opera. Um, and this is somehow more fundamental. And now, if we have a, an opera in vector spaces or a DG opera, then we have something. Um, here you have a notion of an algebra over an operand. This is kind of what operands are designed for. Um, so let's say that now where we take chains of some operands, so this is a DG operand, then we have a notion of EG algebra over these chains. And this is just uh, a DG uh, vector space E, or A, and then for every U in O n, we um, specify a map, or sorry, for every chain, um, we specify a map like this. Uh, and these have to be compatible with DG structure and opera structure. So, opera structure tells you how to compose, uh, and DG structure tells you how differentials commute with primates. Um, and so, it will turn out that all of the algebras that we've considered so far, BD algebras, supercommutative algebras, and even KFB modules, are actually algebras over some topological opera. Um, so, uh, topological O's are responsible in the sense that their chains act on uh, for all algebra structures C so far. Um, so should I expect the compatibility with the operation to be strict? Yes, in characteristic zero, yes. 
uh, everything works. In characteristic P, you need a you need to take resolution in some appropriate places. So this is why I'm working in characteristic zero. Um, um, so uh, the next section is going to be fun. It's going to be an operatic V. So I'm going to define a bunch of topological operats. And most topological operats, so this is kind of a moral statement, are uh, always moduli spaces of some geometric structure. Um, so more or less, the, the rest of this talk is just going to be me drawing pictures. Um, and so you, you better get ready because there's going to be a lot of animals in the zoo. So the, the first animal is something that many of you may have seen, which is the operand of Fregula disks. Um, but I'm going to do a, a slight variation on the operand of Fregula disks that you might have not seen. So it's going to be the moduli space of um, complex, you want to think of this as a complex unit disk, together with a mark point on the boundary, and some um, smooth curves inside um, that each have a mark point um, that might, might not be round. Um, so, so you should think of them as sort of holes. So there's kind of some scary Halloween uh, <laughs> mask. Um, and the claim is that, um, so if I have another um, guy in this operand, so uh, some, some kind of a portrait like this, that's a one-to-one -one operation. Uh, then I can chain it in, for example, here. Um, let's see. Uh, so I can chain it in, and that, that means that I just take this guy, I apply the Riemann mapping theorem to map it in here. This, in this case, it just turns it over, and I get some new uh, gadget, and I erase the whole thing. So this is. Uh, this is an operat structure. And it's equivalent to um, standard frame rule lists. But I like this one more. Uh, for uh, reasons that you'll see in a moment. Um, so that's our zoo animal number one. Uh, zoo animal number two is um, this opera that I've been talking about, which is frame complex surfaces. Um, so first I'm going to draw what this opera classifies. So I'm going to draw the you know, n input, one output piece. So let's say n equals 2. Then I get a, a surface with two incoming boundary components, some um, complex Structure. So, and so for that there. one, uh, your operate composition map it depends on choice of the uh, on choice of the mark point. No, but you choose the component that you do. Yeah, you, yeah. you use the real mapping theorem, I'm going to assume. You can you what? can also you you can, the P, you mean? no 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 it's actually unique. You want to oh. it, 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 there, there's lots of different models. But it's 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 only it's, you can. There's a there's really a unique line flat of... map. So so there's a unique way to map it in such a way that it all kind of um, lands into uh, uh, an open subset of the plane. So so somehow the the, the ambiguity of the real mapping theorem is exactly one mark point. It, it, it doesn't matter. You can this one this one will be a little bit different. This one will be maybe more. This will also be more of a modulized space up, right? Um So so here here I do. Um, maybe what, what you, you, you would prefer that I do, which is, which is 
um, I don't just choose a mark point, but I actually choose so um, the data of a point of this operand is a surface sigma uh, with closed boundary. Um, and I assume that the complex structure on sigma extends to the boundary, maybe even uh, a small kind of neighborhood outside the boundary. Uh, and um, I choose parameterizations um, from S1 to each boundary component. So it, the incoming parameterizations, so, so the, the choose parameterizations which are smooth uh, and because sigma is, is complex, we can we can also require they be analytic. So they're real analytic maps from S1 to this complex surface. Uh, and then we we require that the incoming boundary uh, has positive orientation uh, and outgoing. So this depends on, on how the circle winds around. I'm going to draw the draw ones that orientation because that's easier to keep track of. So I require that the incoming guys have normal pointing inwards, outgoing guys have normal pointing outwards. Uh, so I might have gotten the science wrong. Uh, and the point is that once you have um, these orientation conventions, then you can glue. Uh, so for example, you know, here I have another guy like this. Um, then there is a unique way to match up um, the parameterizations and glue them to um, a single um, frame surface. So uh, this gives upper end. Uh, so this is some big infinite dimensional upper end, um, and you can see that. Um, this frame of this subred is uh, it, it embeds I'm just gonna draw a map um, as an operand to frame the formal surface. Namely, you know, if I have this this guy, uh, then I take look at these guys as incoming boundary components and this guy as an outgoing boundary component, and then I get some. Wrap it around. Uh, and I get I get a class enter and the compatible with composition. Yes. So do you need to in your frame rule this operand give real analytic parameters? Yeah, that again that, that's unique to determine very good map. It's not though, because if you have a if you have a boundary a, in in C, then there is and a mark point, then there's a unique way to map a, a filled in disk. How more we need two mark points. No, we need one mark point. Oh. Right? Oh, this is like the hyperbolic plane. You can no, no. Wait, wait, wait. It's well, like you can translate like the hyperbolic plane, right? I, I, which yeah. is the same as a conformal automorphism of this, which fixes a single mark point. Let's see, maybe, maybe then. But if you're oh, I'm so proud of this. Um, it, it doesn't matter because you only have, yeah, you you only have an just, ambiguity you can just by think of this as the zero component of that guy, and you'll get the right homotopy type. It, it's fine anyway because there's still a, there's a contractible space. Yeah, no, no. I think I think if you're if you're careful, if you also like choose some some tangent vector. I, yeah, I, yeah, let, let's let's that. ignore this because because so so the, the there's a very simple result. So, um, boy, so so the the claim is that this is equivalent to a genus zero mark. You can you can this is a very kind of easy to see result. You can just use your the standard model of the framework this stuff, right? I just use this one so that there's some you know. Um, so you can see the holomorphic structure, but you're you're, um, yeah, you're right that maybe, maybe if you attach real analytic parameterizations to the boundary, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, so so the the statement that the support of that that's, that's you know that doesn't depend on your model is that this is a weak homotopy. Um. So so no wait, maybe maybe I should I should amend this and you know take just regular round little this. And then these do have um, holomorphic structure as well, and they fit inside of here and stuff like that. Um, okay. But yeah, good point. Um, so, okay, now that, that was number two, or not 
is this. Um, okay, so number three is the delete bumper diagram. Um, and so I think that I say that so so the frame load just got read. Um, we've seen its algebraic um, kind of analog. So it's responsible for uh, DV algebras. So representations of chains are up to um, quasi isomorphism, the same thing as DV algebras, up to quasi isomorphism. Um, and so the Dewey Mumford operand is the guy that at genus zero uh, is responsible for. Um, For commutative structures, and as genus greater or equal to zero is responsible for the whole Roman Witten algebra structure. Um, and this is just um, so the domain Mumford n to one space parametrizes nodal nodal surfaces without boundary. Closed nodal surfaces. Um, so you, know, you might have something like this, and the uh, mark with, with some number of mark points, which are labeled by either inputs or outputs, and there can only be one output, exactly one output, and then when you chain them together. Um, um, you just uh, do them, thereby creating a node, a new node. Um, this is this kind of simple-minded operand uh, that gives you all the interesting little wooden structure, at least um, except duality, in the, sense, the, the op operand part of the government. Um, okay, so now we, we've done two different things to surfaces. We've um, taken surfaces with parametrized boundary and we've allowed nodes. So now we can allow both of these things. I'm going to call these nodal, uh, frame nodal surfaces. And so these are uh, nodal surfaces with boundary um, that does not intersect the node. Uh, that is smooth. So not allowed to intersect the node. Um, and here we need to um, sorry, so so in the, in the delete buffer operand there's a standard thing, a standard additional word you have to say, which is that the surfaces have to be uh, stable, so they can't have any components with infinitely many automorphisms. And here we also impose a, a stability uh, condition. So let me draw a picture uh, of how composition works here. Um, Components if they have too many other ones. 
Um, so this is uh, an opera, uh, a topological opera that I think is, is new in our paper and doesn't appear in the literature. But on up to homotopy, it's, it's not new. So the lemma uh, is that um, this um, frame nodal surfaces operand is actually equivalent to the linear operand. Um, so let me prove this lemma. Um, well, I claim that there is a map of operands like this. Um, so construct this map. Let's, let's say we have some um, curve, so some surface with mark points in the Dewey Mumford operand with some number of inputs. Um, then how do we construct uh, something with boundaries? Well, we, we apply something called the funnel map. Uh, which is we, we take a, a little funnel, like a unit disk with standard parameterization of the boundary, we glue it on uh, at every point with orientation you know, inwards for inputs, outwards for outputs. And um, it's an exercise uh, to check this is compatible with operand structure, uh, it stabilizes. So this is kind of this neat way of mapping this relatively small the lean operand. Um, For me, you only glue uh, along the boundary components. Yes. You don't glue it on the walls. Well, there are no nodes are not exposed at all. Every node has. Yeah. There's no marking mark points. No, there's no mark points at all. Um, they're they're parametrized. So, and now, um, oh wait, so we have this map from the domain for an operand straight nodal surfaces, and we need to check that on every space it's a homotopy equivalence. So now it's enough to check on every level n. Um, construct a retraction from here to the image of this guy. And there's a, a very nice way of doing this. So, so let's take some, like, some simple uh, frame nodal surface. Like this. Uh, and um, now I'm going to construct a family depending on some parameter t of surfaces by attaching to every point a cylinder of length t. Um, and then in the nodal space, there is a limit as t goes to infinity, and the limit will exactly um, kind of cone off. It will create a node at every spot. Um, so it will precisely be um, an image, in the image of the final map. So that proves the limit. Um, so this is going to be a very useful model that's equivalent to the Lee Mumford operand. And now finally, uh, I think we're at number five. Um, going to define an operator of frame annuli. Um, this is um, a sub-operand of frame smooth complex surfaces. Um, and it just consists of annuli with um, kind of sy symmetric standard annuli with uniform boundary parameterization, but with some choice of um, where you start your parameterization. So any such annulus of isomorphism, you can put the outer um, um, start point of your parameterization at the top, and then the, the second the second um, the image of the origin of your circle in the inner component is going to define for you a point um, in the open unit disk. And uh, this point is, is can be any point that's not zero. So this is 
lambda non-zero complex integers less than strictly less than one. Uh, and so this this is a semi-group. Uh, and you, it's easy to see that composition of annuli is exactly multiplication of the semi-group. Uh, and then we define a variant of this, which is frame nodal annuli, which is just a compactification. So this is the side of here, and this is a compactification um, where we add, where we allow lambda equal to zero, and this corresponds under our um, topologization of nodal surfaces, this corresponds to a nodal annulus. So the, um, these sim, um, circle actions, in this case, degenerate. You can rotate these two components independently. Um, so, and, and this is, so, so this is a contractible space, uh, the unit disk, which has a multiplication structure. Uh, and so the idea is that, so this disk, D star, it maps to S1 in a homotopy equivalent way. And this is contractible, so this is exactly a trivialization of S1. Um, so from this, we can reformulate um, the drummond cole bruno Ballet result. Um, using some category theory uh, of this S1 trivialization result at genus zero. This will be a reformulation, in fact, a strengthening um, as follows. So a theorem. Um, so consider our operad of frame smooth complex surfaces. Uh, inside of this, we have the operad of frame annuli. So this is equal one to S1. Um, or, and here we take genus zero. So this is responsible for the BP structure. This is, the S1 is actually responsible for the um, K of B action. Um, and um, here we have frame nodal annuli. Um, and this is just uh, a vector space. Uh, DG, everything is DG. Um, and so now the, the structure of a BV algebra, so, so these, these maps of operads, they give pullback maps um, on categories of algebras. And the structure of a guy here, a guy here, and a quasi isomorphism between their pullbacks to here is exactly a BV algebra. So pullback um, is the same thing as a BV algebra with trivialization pull back in this categorical sense. Uh, and then via some standard category theory, you can see that um, a pullback on the level of categories uh, is the same thing as an algebra over the push, push up on the level of operands. Um, so operands, um, you can check as a category with co-limits. Um, and so sorry, I, I, there's no theorem here. Um, a picture, and so the theorem is that the homotopy co-limit um, of this diagram, of um, so annuli, uh, is equivalent to the category of frame nodal surfaces, and here we need to put in this arboreality condition. What, what this condition is, is you take the irreducible components of your surface, um, they form a tree whose edges are nodes, and you want this tree to be, or th this graph to be a tree. Uh, so what, what, does this, what does this word mean? So homotopy co-limit means that you take all diagrams quasi-isomorphic to these, and you, you sort of take the, the universal such um, Diagram and you take the ordinary co-limit and the way you actually compute it is you resolve um, by, by some bar resolution. And so, um, sorry, here. Oh, sorry. This is this is this is the general genus result. And at, at genus zero, 
uh, their arboreality condition uh, is automatic. And this result was actually proven in a separate paper by Drummond Cole, but, but using some different models for these operands. Um, and so the, the key idea, um, right, so, so well, what, I, what I've given is I've given some, some um, topological picture of topological operands that encodes um, in its genus zero piece um, this Drummond Cole Bruno Vallette result but has a natural genus greater equal to zero generalization. And so this is, let me, let me just, I accidentally said the statement at all genera, and, and this is our main theorem with Alex. Um, and I think in the remaining five minutes, I can explain how to prove it. And sort of the key idea is that um, Uh, the proof is that uh, these are good models um, in the sense that you can replace the Hoka limit by the limit. So, you know, as the, oh, sorry, by the regular co limit without the whole. So, as the saying goes, you can take the whole out of the co limit, but you can't take the co limit out of the whole. Um, so, and um, so, so there is this non-homotopy theorem, which is that the push out of these diagrams, which, which push out in, in algebra means amalgamated product, frame nodal surfaces times frame nodal annuli over just regular frame annuli. Um, this is actually literally um, equivalent as an operand to frame nodal surfaces. So, oh, sorry. Something, this is this. Yeah, this is, this is the right diagram. So, so this, again, this is the guy that acts on um, symplectic homology. This is the trivialization. And this is the thing that the Grubble wouldn't Think it's responsible for the growth of algebra structure. Do you mean upper wheel there? Do you mean upper wheel there? Yeah. Do I mean upper wheel? Arboreal, yes. Right. And so, how does the proof go? Well, what is uh, an amalgamated product of algebras? Um, if these were algebras, not operas, you'd, you'd take words in these two operas with some relations from here uh, and form a, a new opera. Well, or sorry, a new algebra. Um, and in operas, you do the exact same thing, except instead of words, you take trees. And so the way that such trees would work is they would look like um, curves that are split up into um, components by, by boundaries um, that are you know, in the shape of a tree, hence the arboreality, um, and that consist um, of um, two colors, two different types uh, of, um, of pieces. And the pieces will be colored by either this guy or this guy. So for example, this is, oh, sorry, yeah, this one is orange. So this is definitely a frame nodal annulus. Uh, this is definitely not an annulus, but a smooth surface. This is a nodal annulus. And here I'm going to, I can think of it as a nodal annulus without a node. Um, this is a surface. And now uh, on top of this, you have two relations. So first of all, um, if something, so a component like this one, um, so frame annulus, can switch color. You can think of it as either a nodal annulus um, or a smooth surface. And the second one is that um, adjacent components uh, of the same color can be glued. 
So for example, here what I can do is I can take this one and I can switch its color to think of it as a smooth surface, and then I can glue, for example, this one and this one, and remove this boundary. Uh, and then it's, it's actually a relatively simple exercise uh, that um, a given surface, so any, any splitting, any arboreal splitting is equivalent to any other. So long as, as the arboreal splitting, splitting is on some total surface that, that has arboreal type. Um, and it's easy to see that you can only have a splitting if, if the surface is of arboreal type. So, so there's some combinatorial argument um, with very kind of simple-minded pictures about why this statement is true. And then if you want to, so, so this is without the, the homotopy, um, this is the regular colimit. And then if you want to think of it as a homotopy colimit, then in, instead of these two equivalence relations, you, you have some higher equivalence relations. And you can check just that at every level, as you add more equivalence relations, you still have a bunch of equivalence. So, so this equivalence survives the homotopy level. So this is a sketch of a proof of our result, which gives us higher genus generalization of this algebraic identification. And unfortunately, I didn't get to uh, motives but uh, that, that's it. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, Just so a minute. Can you uh, oh. break the meaning of already? Yes. So um, remember this this is equivalent to um, the mean Mumford upright. So so for for something in the Dewey Mumford upright you have a dual tree. Um, so, for example, you know, this is a standard genus 1 normal curve, and this dual tree is, looks like this. So it has so a second graph. Dual graph. So dual graph. Yeah. And so you, you require it to be a tree. So, so this oh, is not a... Yeah. I see. Yeah. Um, can you say a couple of words about um, how you get, uh, sorry, um, how you get the S1 trivialization on, say, quantum cohomology or on the Hochschild cohomology of the Kaya category? So, so like this is all just algebra. Right, right. right. So, so the, the, the sort of the, the there's this big mystery that, that you don't get it on the T-side. You, you, you don't get it purely categorically. The, the S1 mm -hmm. trivialization is actually because you have some localization on, on symplectic cohomology. So I, I, I don't think, I, I don't know of an algebraic way to see this. It's, it's an, so, so there's, there's actually, you, you know that there exists uh, an S1 trivialization because of the Hodge to Durand degeneration. Mm -hmm. that, that gives you the existence of one anarchy, but, but there is still a choice. There's still a, uh, it can be a positive. Right, that's choice. analogous to choosing a large complex structure limit or a large volume limit, right? right uh, so, so I heard these words, but I don't understand them. <laughs> There are cho geometric choices that you can make that give you splitting. And so you're saying that the they correspond to some, some choice of geometry on the symplectic? Yeah, yeah, it's not categorical data. Or if I see. you want it to be categorical data, then you need to, to. So you're saying that for any splitting, you can choose a picture such as the S1 trivialization comes from that. Split. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I mean, how so, so this is a good, yeah, yeah, this is a good, so, so it's a generalization of the, in genus zero, it's, it's close. Yeah. yeah. In higher genus, it doesn't. So, so in higher genus, it's just some, some, wait, it, it, it gives you something. It gives you, 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 you have some, some homology. You can take the homology of software and it will actually act. Um, it, it won't give you curve you right? And so, so to, to do this, you actually want to run this, these arguments for props. And so this is sort of. There is some problem with props because the model structure is hard to understand. Well, in the beginning, we had a theorem where you promised that we would relate this high unit normal written algebra to something on synthetic homology. So I would suspect I would just somehow. No, so, so the, wait, the answer is that, that there is, there is, is a, a small piece. So, so you, can, you can take a 
homology class in here, and you can push it forward to the clone. Oh, Non-aboreal, non right? And so sometimes you'll get zero, but sometimes you'll get something. So, so it, you know, you're not going to get any algebraic classes, but you'll have some, some homology classes, or maybe some invariants. It's, it's a piece. And, and you're, you're right, you're not going to get any perfect classes. So Do you expect what, what, that your independence of the uh, uh, contractibility of the operations on, on the car coherence homotopy levels, that it will work for the props? Yes. So, so the, the problem for props is that we don't know if the bar resolution is cofactor. So, so we don't know. And then there exists some some model structures, but but the model structures you can't work with at the moment. Why they say I don't know. I don't know. Um, so, so it's a, it's a topological question. But but you you would expect this to work. Um, Okay. Okay, let's